Welcome to another edition of the Heartbreak Series, and today we're doing the Nebraska game from 2010. We got my brother back in studio from Ames, uh, Iowa City, all the way back, way back to Humble, Iowa, and we just got done watching the what a heartbreaking game that was. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I mean, thankfully, personally, I handled the loss a lot better today than I did 11 years ago. Um, we can get into that in a little bit, but I mean, my, my main takeaway is Nebraska was ranked seventh and they were visibly more talented than us at almost every position, if not every position. And even how the game went, we, they're, they're the we were borderline getting, going to get blown out yeah. down 14 points in the fourth quarter. So, I mean, we'll get into the kind of how the, the game went, but. It was very close to being a 21, 28 point loss. A few things go our way just to be close enough to get a Royal kick to the nuts right at the very end. So here, maybe you're back closer here. Turn it over. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. Moving on. Um, so like to set the stage, it was on ABC. It was November 6th, 2010 against number seven, Nebraska. It was the year. The year before is when the the, the Sioux game where it was the eight turnover eight game. Turnover game. Lincoln. Um Osternot was hurt. Alexander Robinson was hurt. We got our both backups in. We had eight that we hit forced eight turnovers, some really bad turnovers, and we came out the win. And that was the infamous Paul Rhodes, I'm so proud. Could not be proud. <laughs> no. I am so Good. proud. <laughs> Moment in the yeah, rocker. Yeah. I mean we won nine to seven. Yeah, it was it was an ugly, ugly game, but it was like one of the probably like the first game where like wow, that was incredible. Like the first upside game. Who had the clinching pick in that game? Do you remember? It was Jesse Smith. Jesse Smith. Yeah. yeah. No, it that game, I, I don't know. You look back like it's hard to like remember how I viewed things then, but like I don't know. I feel like just every game I went into back then, like being in high school and middle school, like watching Iowa State football, it was just like you wake up, you're like, okay, well, like more likely than not, we're going to get blown out today. Let's just get into the second half and let's see what see, happens. Let's see what happens. And like the also coming in this game, we're with five wins. We're five and five. We just need one more. The bowl game, like the six games, was such a big thing back then. We just need one more, one more victory to get the bowl game. And unfortunately, after this game, we lose out and don't make a bowl. We game. Don't make a bowl game. Well, some looking back, some really talented players. Like yeah, our defense had a lot of good players. We had, Colin, we had just to like break down the offense was Alexander Robinson, who was a lot better. Like going through this game, he was a lot better than I remember. He was good. He's like maybe top five running back of our lifetime for sure. For and, sure, of yeah. our lifetime. Yeah, for um, sure. Uh, Osternod, who in the first quarter rolled his ankle bad, bad, and like there was a play where he rolled his ankle. He was obviously down, but the refs didn't call him down. They pick it up, run it for a touchdown, and then they review it obviously and overturn it. But and Jerome Taylor was in for one one play, I think. And uh, but he, for a amount of like options and run plays for uh, Arnod during the game, was like the thing that I pointed like. That blew my mind. Like, he was, like, visibly hurt from the point of injury and then just continually kind of was hobbling more as the game went on. But we were still running read option, triple option, QB draw, QB sneak. Like, the guy could barely move around in the pocket, let alone run downfield. But we we uh, decided not to throw those plays out of the playbook and use them quite often. So I, I really – that's one thing I probably – one thing I respect Austin or not about the most as far as it was his last this season or even a, his career, like his last game, he gets hurt bad. And like, I think if it's any other game, he probably wouldn't have played the rest of the game. But it was his last game and Jack Trice. Right. You got to play. No, I, I agree. And I think as Iowa State fans, we would expect a guy that grew up in Ames to do that. But like he played so hard and like, 
I don't know. He didn't leave anything le- left after the game. He gave it his all. Yeah, he was noticeably crushed after the game. Yeah, I mean, I just like, I don't know. For me and you, like, the only thing we could relate this to is like, you have a great season in NCAA football, yeah, 2014, and then mm-hmm. like you screw up and turn off the turn off the PlayStation, right? Like Austin didn't have the opportunity to turn off the Xbox. Like he, I don't know. I for me, like putting his shoes, growing up an Iowa State fan, fulfilling his dream to be the quarterback at Iowa State, yeah, and his then dad to played, lose his dad played Iowa State. Yeah, to lose his last home game like that, yeah. I'm sure today he it still bothers him. Yeah, I it, looking back like. It's funny how like we go back and rewatch these games and how how much it hurts. Still, we know it's going to happen. Yeah. And like just see like wow, that went our way. That one imagine if that went our way. Like But but there's a lot of This what, game had a lot that went our way. Yeah. Let's we'll, we'll go through some. Um the, so like we'll just start at the first quarter, okay? Arna gets okay. hurt. Okay, just start at the Nebraska side. Okay. Ta- they had a star quarterback, Taylor Martinez. I think his brother now plays there. I'm not Ad- sure. Adrian? Adrian Martinez. Might have made that up. It's all good. I don't know if they, what, them brothers or not? I have no idea. I've heard, I heard that from someone. I don't know if that's ever been. Yeah, ever. people never lie. I'm pretty sure. But he, he was a really good quarterback. And uh, he was out, came in for one play. And the Cody Green kid who came in, who was, sounds familiar, transferred later transferred to Tulsa. We played a couple times. Played him twice, really? twice in one year. Yep, we got Steel Jants, and we lost to them in Memphis. He, yeah. Wow, I did not know that. Yeah, I waited to say this on the podcast. I, I knew that we were watching it. And, huh. and uh, yeah, um, as we said, Arna gets hurt five minutes left in the first quarter. He was out for a couple plays, comes back in. They, He's hobbling to the sidelines, gets taped up, thrown back out, and he did – he had an up and down game, and yeah, like we had a Jeff Woody fumble in the third thirty five yard line. It, it, we were field driving go, field goal range. We could have. There's like so many ticky tack things, like, but like that's one of them. Um, the second quarter, Nebraska finally comes out and scores. Uh, yeah, they, they, yeah. I mean, the first half, I know like, there was nothing really stuck out to me in the first half that like was a huge monumental thing that could have gone our way. I mean, being who we were, like we turned the ball over every once in a while. That year we took did a pretty good job of taking care of the ball, but Nebraska was v- way better than us. Like Prince of Makamura was one of their starting corners. Burkhead. I think he's still playing in the NBA, in NFL today, not NBA. NFL today was a first-round pick for the Giants. Rex Burkhead played for the Patriots a long time. I'm not sure if he's still in the league. Like they had talent everywhere. Will yeah. Compton, shout out, busted with the boys. Linebackers played in the NFL a long time. I mean, you look at us. We had Clutcho Selmy still in the NFL. Yeah, we had we had, we had so we had talent too. But like top to bottom, but like they the, were much like, more talented, a lot more depth than us. Like, but we this game, man, up and down, up and down. The thing like, is, like watching it again, knowing like just as my life as an Iowa State fan, like it got to the point we're down fourteen. It's like it's it could be. I, I would have like I'm like okay, it's over. Yeah, but then, but yeah, we'll go through some things like um, Nebraska said scores first, and then I think we the next drive is when we come back. There's a it's on the one yard line. There's a bull crap for penalty on holding play. Yeah, but we still. And, but then the next play, Jake Williams scores. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I think the big the first half. There wasn't, there was a, like a few ticky tack things looking back, like, oh, if this would have happened, like, obviously, we would have been in a better scenario. I think we played pretty well. And like, it was pretty low scoring. Like, our defense played really well. And I think Nebraska was really struggling just trying to make up for Taylor Martinez, obviously, not being in. And then Cody Green gets dinged up too. So the, yeah, Taylor Martinez one, comes in for one play. Yeah. Um, and then they started running the Wildcat while they're trying to figure out, well, if Rex, Cody Green's going to play. And then the Wild, we couldn't stop the Wildcat because Rex, Rex, Rex Burkhead was, was a stud insane that he was insane and yeah like, he, i don't remember him being on nebraska like i like remember his name in the nfl yeah but like, he was yeah and like there's a later play in the i think it was in the third quarter where uh, aj klein plays in the nfl for bills i believe now mm-hmm. rips his head off like when he scores a touchdown and then nebraska like they start pushing us and they get a flag but like if they're i don't know if they they did not review it 
Like, if AJ Klein gets reviewed that now, I think he might get kicked out again. Yeah. Which, yeah. Um, continuing on to second quarter, Jacob Williams, I said, scores a touchdown. We get a defensive stop, the next one, and then Grandma Honey misses a 49-yard yard field goal. It's his fifth miss in a row. They can point that out. And then the next possession, Nebraska, like, Nebraska was down. And then there's like a Q few seconds go by. Then Davis Sims just rips it out. And we get the like the angles of like Yeah, back. we had very convenient camera placements where they could not see the, the Nebraska player being down. Yeah. But if you watch just watching it live, he was definitely down. down. Yeah. It Davis just, Sims just like being the strong safety that he was. Just rips, rips it, it out. out. We get it. And then yeah. And then and then it's like a three and out. The next thing that happens after getting that fumble blew my mind. Yeah, I'm gonna we I'm gonna say it right here. Okay, um, go ahead. So like, okay, as I'm saying, Grand Mahoney comes out wide after missing a 49 yard field goal. Wide right, like not even close. It's his fifth straight miss, and it's fourth that fourth, fourth down, and eight. fourth and eight or something like that. 57 yard field goal. Like, this has to be the longest field goal ever in our lifetime. Got to be close. They he has the wind. I'll give him that. Like, but still, fifty-seven yards. That's a long ways, and he kicks it. It's way it's down straight the middle. Could have he could have made it from sixty-five? Like legitimately. Yeah, yeah. Which is insane. And then the, the funny part of the thing about that is then he's the like kickoff person, and then like kicks it off, and then doesn't make it not even close to the end zone. No, yeah, like literally seventy-five seconds later. Kicks off and doesn't even pass the fifteen. Yeah, I don't know if that's like it's hard to judge because we don't know if it what the, that's that the game plan, but like, but also he still had the win at his back. Yeah, it yeah. Just, it's just a funny thing that went our way. But, I mean, just think about today. Can think, you imagine trotting a kicker out for a fifty-seven yard field goal? Like last year, we had a kicker who was short by a mile, like a, On like, a forty-yard field goal. Yeah, yeah, and then that was a big. Play like it was huge. Paul Rhodes. If he doesn't make that field goal, we're not talking it, about this. No, it, it like turns into a route. Yeah, he misses his sixth in a row. We go into halftime. Because the thing is, here's my thought: is like, honestly, as crazy as it sounds, that field goal was a huge momentum shift because like we were kind of hanging around, but we it was visible that Nebraska was better than us. Yeah, we make the field goal. We're like. Paul Rhodes is running up and down the sideline. He's we up, juiced. We go up 10-7. If we miss that, they get the ball at the 50 yeah. with a minute left. They probably score a touchdown. We're down 14, a half time. 14-7. Yeah, yeah, we would have lost. We'd have still lost, but we would have got killed, yeah. I think. So that was like going into halftime. That's such a big play. And then Alex Burkhead. I Rex just put, Burkhead. I, Rex Burkhead. No, Alex. Rex Burkhead? Not Alex. I put Alex. I don't know why. Anyways, Rex Burkhead. It rhyme at least, but. Um, comes out, he just kills us. Wildcat offense, we don't know what to do. It's just a classic, like, they have a guy that is just such a such a league higher than any of our talent. Um, Yeah, like, I compare it to, like, uh, West Virginia receiver who just absolutely murdered us. What's his name? Tavon Austin. Tavon Austin. Single-handedly beat us. <laughs> Austin. Austin, 45. Austin, 50. 45, 40. Single handedly, just so much faster. That's than a great pull. That's yeah. That was like a guy a, that really did not pan out in the NFL. Which you think, think about the NFL schemes today, like I think he still plays. He does, play. but like he's not. He's not a special. A stud. Yeah, he murdered, murdered us. He absolutely murdered us. And they had Geno Smith who pushed uh, Wally def- Burnham. Right, that's imagine if that happened today. That's insane. Um. Anyways, keep going on. Nebraska kicks a field goal to start to tie at ten ten. And then we get the ball. Austin and I throws a one of the worst pick sixes I've ever seen. And then the next drive. Yeah, no, the the pick six was literally his probably second progression stares down the slot receiver. And the safety breaks on the ball before our receiver does to get a head start to run it back for a pick six. Yeah, it was really bad. It I mean you can't really fault him because he was playing an injury, but yeah, but but man, big play, 
And then the next drive, it's like third and long, rolling out right. We Flag is thrown for holding. And then we just toss it up. He just throws it away, and then they pick it off. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then they go down. Yeah, so they go 17-10, throw another pick. No, no, no. Hold on. Go. They go down. That's the play where A.J. Klein rips Rex Burkhead's head off. No, but the pick six was 17-10. Yeah, 17-10. And then they throw another pick, and then they score again. Yep. 24-10. Rex Burkhead. His head is still on. Not sure how. By the way. <laughs> that's so insane. He just, like, literally, like, grabbed his head, and Rex Burkhead was just like. Let's, let's cut to a clip. Oh. Uh, all right, coming back. And we're back. And, uh, yeah. Hey, you guys want to see another clip? 24-10. Nebraska, like, if Dad will sit that, if we were at the game, we'd probably were walking. We're walking out. Of, like, yeah, no, that. Dad's like, yeah, we got to beat the traffic. Dad would be jogging in his jeans without a belt. and Yeah, yeah. me and Michael are 15 yards behind. Like, four people get that joke, but. Yeah, we're like 15 yards behind. Like, who the hell's like at, it? Parked at Hy-Vee in East Ames. Yeah, it's like the walk of shame. Can we talk about how insane? <laughs> Think about all the streets in between High V and Jack Trice. Yeah, there's not one spot. Yeah, just saving. We're, we're dad just p- penny pitching and saving fifteen dollars to park. It, it wasn't even like we weren't even parked the closest lot in High V. No, like, we were on the opposite side of High V. Yeah, yeah, that's insane. Here, let's continue on to the game. What? Cut in a clip of the map. From IV to all right, we'll be right here. Okay, people, people are listening. Are like, this geese guys need to shut the hell up. All right. Sorry, Grandma Joe. All right, yeah. Sorry, twenty of our listeners. Continuing on, as I was saying, after AJ Klein ripped Burkett's head off, Nebraska kicks it off at the fifteen yard line. There's a penalty. We get to the twenty five yard line. Jake Williams has a great catch with 13.52 left. In the third quarter or fourth quarter now? Third quarter. 13.52 left? Yeah. No way. Yeah. No. It was 24.10. With 13.52 yeah. left in the third? They scored two touchdowns yes. in two minutes? Yeah. That quickly. because All right, guys, it was that fast. And then Lunds had a big play. So, wait. Our first possession out of halftime, we threw a pick six? No, 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 no. Ber- they tied it on a field goal. No, I'm, I'm saying now it's... Yes. Second half just started. They had a long drive. But how did two minutes only get off the clock? Because we threw a pick six, and then we drove a little bit, and then threw another pick. So they scored two touchdowns in less than two minutes? Yeah. Okay. That's that's wild. Yeah, because I think we went three and out after that. So looking back on that, we are way better now. So it's we went three and out like every... No, I know. I mean, like three and out was like the life of a Cyclone State. football fan. Yeah. Like, if it was like, oh, we got two first downs. First downs were like, Jack Trice was bumping after a first down. Because like, that's like where the go Cyclones, like we celebrated every first down. That's yeah. what it comes from. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Um. Anyways, continuing on again. What? Are you getting mad that I'm getting off track? No. I'm not mad at all. So uh, we get down all the way down to the one yard line. Ostronaut's clearly in. They call him down at the one yard line. If we but it wasn't like it wasn't instantly down. Like the, the, the two refs, he wasn't down. Run ever. to get like run close. They're staring at each other, and then they're just like, "Nope, nope, not in." And then they have to go review it. Imagine if they didn't have review. And then or we, if we had to challenge it. Yeah, we challenge. No, we no, they didn't. We didn't. The booth did it. But like, imagine if we had to challenge that play. Yeah, stupid. And obviously in. Calls him in for a touchdown. But like, it was, I mean, it was obviously in if you watch it, but like reviewing it, there was not a really clear cut. No. But not like a clear cut, like ball across the plane. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's kind of a, similar to David, the, t- the Liberty Bowl, but David's that one. Yeah. There wasn't like a, that's a different story. But yeah. Anyways, we 24 17. The following kickoff, Niles Paul, the famous Niles Paul. Now it's Paul with the, one of the more famous fumbles against Iowa State. This is another one, but the one to, before is like worse. But this is close. Cut to a clip. And we're back. 
um, Niles Paul fumbles on the ensuing kickoff. I'm like, it was like, no, but it wasn't even like a, it was like, uh, he shouldn't have returned it. Yeah. He was like, he, he caught it six yards into the end zone. He's like, Oh, it was like he hesitated. And then he like ran out and then like just fumbled it on like, or 20. Yeah. Yeah. And then so now 24, 17, we get the ball back now. Down yeah. seven. Jack Trice is bumping. In the red zone. This is pre-Juicy Wiggle, but I'm not sure where they're playing back then. And okay, it's probably like, I won't back down or... Nickelback or... Or... Uh, Kitty Perry or something like that. Like Coldplay yeah. or... So, yeah. Owl City. And then Arnod to A-Rob, touchdown. 24-24. We have... We, the momentum is all on our side. Oh, so quickly. The touchdown pass to our A-Rob was sick, too. Was legendary. Yeah. Yeah. And, yep, we have all the momentum. The next a falling drive, Nebraska goes three and out. And then we go three and out. No, but So they go three and out. So they, it went from being down 14 to now we're tied with the ball. Yes. But were we in the fourth quarter yet? No, we're in the third quarter. Still in the third quarter. Yes. Third quarter was busy. And then Nebraska's go three and out. We go three and out. Nebraska goes three and out. Our no not, one scores the rest of the half. Or half. Yes. Or the whole game. Yeah. And then Arnaud throws another pick. And then Nebraska doesn't score. Grant Mahoney misses a 55-yard field goal, which is so, like, the announcers, like. Yeah, like, did, are they going to let Arnaud throw it on second down? Because we're, they they're, in, we're, they're in field goal range. Because, like. A Grant kick. Mahoney's now one for six. Yeah. In his last six field goals, but he made a 57-yarder. And then he makes, misses it. Right. Had the leg, though. Yeah, it did. Misses the field goal. Then we go into overtime. Nothing happens. We go into overtime. We get the ball with 40 seconds left, and we Iowa take a knee. We flip a coin. Iowa State wins. We per- defer to defense. Nebraska scores two plays two in. Two plays. Rex Burkhead scores. Or, yeah, like a yeah, Rex 21-yard run. Yep. And then back shoulder fade to Will- Jake Williams. Yeah. Jake Williams had a fantastic game. Yes, he did. I don't think he would play today, but he, like, I don't know, former walk-on to scholarship player, just play like, I don't know, he had great hands, wasn't the fastest, wasn't the quickest, but... Yeah, his back shoulder fade. He, his timing with Arnaud was really, really worked well, and yeah, I thought, yeah, he had a really, really good game. And then the ultimate play... One of the biggest nut kicks in Iowa State history, like of our lifetime. It's because, like, we for moments of like game of emotional swings going from like you watch the start of the game, we're visibly not as good as Nebraska to going down 14 in the third quarter, just cementing the fact that we're not as good as Nebraska. To scoring, have a fumble in the kickoff, and then scoring to tie it up. Yeah, but the momentum was all on our side. And then have multiple opportunities to have a drive. To seal it. To take the lead. I mean, Grant Mahoney makes the 55-yard field goal. We potentially win the game to this moment. We're like, I don't know. This moment, compared to others, we're like, you make the choice. The whole historic choice. Do you go for two or do you just kick it and keep going into overtime? Most of the times, it's like the offense just stays in the field. Yeah. Like the Brock Purdy versus Oklahoma. Like we told Oklahoma, hey, we're going to go for two. We're going to try to win it right here. I just remember sitting there watching. I'm like, okay, we scored. Like, let's like, get to the caught, next overtime. It caught let's me off happens. guard. It yeah. Caught me off guard. But it happened so fast. Yeah. And then, so like it happened so fast. You see the holder stand up. We're like, and then you look at Colin Franklin. You're like, Why don't he's open. open. Like, this is the right call. And then, and then the backup do- punter doesn't set his feet. Takes a step on the run, just lofts it into the air. Picked off. And then the game's over. Yep. It was a very reminiscent of the Sandlot guy when he threw his the first ball. <laughs> it, it's like he never touched the ball before. 
<laughs> throws the ball, doesn't set his feet. Game that's great, over. That's a great analogy. We'll cut to a clip. And we're back. Just root like oh, a rod. I would have rather got blown out. Alexander Robinson, last game in Jack Trace. Austin Arnaud. Austin Arnaud. Jake Williams. Colin Franklin. David Sims. No. Yeah, David Sims. One of the Leonard Johnson. God. No. It was not Leonard Johnson. Okay, whatever. One. Just a heartbreaking. Michael's throwing cushions out the like, okay, we'll we'll uh Kind of we'll, set this, we'll set the yeah, backstory. We'll, we'll, we'll uh we'll rewind to now it's 2010 again, and I am a 15 year old sophomore in high school. Yep. Okay. I'll, and, I'll I'll talk. I'll say it. Okay. I'll lead it up. So me and my dad. So the first quarter, like the first half, Michael's just unbearable, <laughs> hanging on every play, just a hothead. My dad looks at me. He's like, "Do you want to go watch the game downstairs?" I'm like, "Yes." <laughs> and then we watch the whole second half downstairs. And to give it context, we were sitting in our living room watching it on a normal size TV. Yeah. They go downstairs to our unfinished basement to watch it on a 19 inch TV. Yep. Sitting on a uh, bench <laughs> a press. Bench press. Because Michael is so annoying. And so, and it was like, I would stay back when we we're, like, when we we're not as good. We're like, if you were, if we're doing good, you don't leave your seat. It was superstitious. Like, you don't leave your right. seat. We stay downstairs. We come upstairs to just Michael freaking out. After, like this was after the the fake PAT. The fake PAT. Michael's throwing cushions outside, just freaking out, and it was pretty funny. What do you? Yeah, have to say? I what mean, like have? I don't know. I always thought like this game was li- earlier in the two thousands, where like I was like younger. Yeah. But knowing that I was in high school, almost legally allowed to drive, <laughs> not uh, not one of my prouder moments. Um, but I mean, even like eleven years later, I watch this game and I am still upset, enraged. Yeah, because like I'm not sad that we lost because we were definitely not as good, which is so different from today. We're like we're like legitimately better than most teams we play in the Big Twelve. But just to like to have made the right call, Paul Rhodes made the right call by going for a fake PAT. Colin Franklin is wide open. Yep. Wide open. And the original live shot doesn't do it justice. It's one. It's from the corner shot where it shows it in slow motion. Colin Franklin breaking free. And then the backup punter, like, on the run, flipping it up in the air. If he sets his feet and just throws it to the corner of the end zone, it's catch... And, if that happens, that's one of the most rewatchable games yeah, I know. ever. Just like the Florida State game we did earlier. Like we would just but also saying if we make that throw, we make four straight bowl bowl games. Right. And then we leave Nebraska like having Nebraska exit the Big 12 going out that way. And we had a, we controlled our own destiny in the Big 12 North at the time. Yeah. If we'd have won out, we would have played in the Big 12 t- Title game. Yeah, but we, thank God we didn't. We lost out. We lost out pretty I know, easily. But can you imagine like the conversation going from like we want to make a bowl game to like, oh crap, we can make the Big Twelve championship? Which like the talent and compared to like last year, like that's laughable. But like the Big Twelve North, that's like the special thing about having the Big Twelve North. Anything can happen if you just win a couple of games. Just beat Nebraska and Yeah. Colorado, Missouri. Yeah. Yep. So that's the Another edition of the Heartbreak series, and that it, one... It, I will have a link in the description, maybe. Um, if you just, like, rewatch, starting at halftime, the first half is pretty uneventful. Um, just rewatch the half. Second half, like, go through the, the emotional roller coaster of we're tied at halftime, instantly down 14, instantly tied again, and then to have watch that final play, like even though I knew the play was coming, watching the replay on the broadcast, we were up at halftime. Okay, ten to seven. Okay, but like even then, like we're half time, like we're not. Yeah, things. But like going into the PAT after the touchdown, which the touchdown was awesome, and just like knowing what's gonna happen, but then watching it, knowing it's gonna happen, it doesn't. 
give it just as a how awful it makes you feel. Yeah. It makes you feel this pretty similar to you saw live. It's like, I can't believe that. That play was a ballsy play. It just came, it came down to the player throwing a easy pass to a touchdown. Just throw overthrow it. He yeah. underthrew it by like 10 yards. And yeah, and I, I like I have many friends. I feel like, I don't know if we, like I'm sure Thomas distanced himself after the way I handled it, but like the week after that, like we would like go in the backyard and then just like yeah. make that throw. Like someone we holding like, Act like they're the holder. Stand up and then throw it ten yards. Yep. So, yeah, it's we'll wrap this up. And um, thanks for listening. And go rate and rate and review. Subscribe to YouTube. We're like on, subscribe. We're on uh we're on Twitter too and TikTok if you're a youngin. And yeah, thanks for listening. And we'll be back for I'm not sure which next one we're gonna do for heartbreak, but. Yeah, I mean, tweet us if you have any ideas of there's if there's any heartbreaking games that you that are um, that you remember and want to hear about. Like, this is like one of the more visceral heartbreaks that I've ever had. Even though we we weren't that good at football, like the opportunity to beat Nebraska the last time we potentially ever play them. Uh, and this is noteworthy. This is before the Oklahoma State game. Like we haven't had like this big of a win at home before in a lot like a long time since like Seneca. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, but it is much easier to watch a game like that with yep. our current roster. We'll leave it at that. All right. Appreciate you guys listening. Go clones. Go clones.